Okay, uh, uh, shalom everyone, good Yom Tov, good Yom Tov to everybody. Uh, it's so good, it's so good to, to be with you on Yom Tov, really. Uh, the, the, you're, you're like, uh, it's like being, it's like being with family uh, and that's part of the part of the joy of part of the joy of Yantuf is to be uh, with family, and I I uh, I certainly consider you no no less than than blood blood uh, family. Okay, so Chavra, this is kind of uh, this is kind of the 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 mood on the streets here in Jerusalem. Okay, just just want to transfer some of the mood. la 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 da 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 la la da la 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 la. Alla la 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 da 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 la 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 alla la Alla la 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 Alla la 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 Ay, ay, chag sameach, ay, ay, chag sameach, ay, 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 chag sameach, chag sameach, chedid alay, chag sameach, alalay, chag sameach, alalay, Ha <laughs> Chag Sameach Ay, Chag Sameach Alalai, Chag Sameach Chag Sameach Tidid Alalai, Chag Sameach Alalai, Chag Sameach Alalai, did you capture the mood? Okay, uh, friends, uh, first of all, good Yontif, good Yontif to you all, a Chag Sameach and a Shana Tova. Uh, my, my, my wishes and my blessings, and please bless me back that, you know, that it be, it, it be a year, the upcoming year, we're going to talk a little bit later on about time. Uh, the upcoming year uh, should, should, be, should be one that is like, like no other, should be, should be one uh, that is replete with uh, personal health, uh, with, with inner, 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 inner joy which we're going to talk about today, uh, and and uh, a, a little a little less, and a little less of a chaotic world, a little less of a chaotic world, a little bit more sanit sanity uh, uh, infusing the world. So, friends. Uh,
just let me for a moment put my friend away here. Uh, I know certainly, and I, I'd like to welcome back uh, all the people that were here in Israel, back, back to Florida, uh, and I, I wish all you Floridians uh, safety, safety. Uh, I forgot the name of the hurricane, someone remind me. Ian. Ian, okay. Uh, I, 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 really, I really hope uh, that, that you, you remain uh, safe while while Ian, Ian does its thing. I know, I know that certainly for those that have, uh, that, that were on, uh, that were on the IJKL uh, Israel trip, and, and, the, and those that weren't, weren't uh, I, I know that a lot of you have heard and absorbed uh, many, many many insights on uh, im ein anili mili, on that Mishnah in Pirkei Avot. Uh, if I am not for myself, who will be for me? Uh, and nevertheless, I would like to, to begin a Rosh Hashanah teaching exactly with that. I'd like to offer a thought on this, what, 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 I, what I consider this, uh, it, it's, a, it's Hillel's saying is a central, mamish, a central uh, piece of wisdom which actually has everything to do with the central message and meaning of Rosh Hashanah. So if you want an encapsulization of, so what, what is Rosh Hashanah and what is the big deal and what is the, what is the mode of, uh, of, of meditation that, that I must capture that I must capture on Rosh Hashanah before, before it leaves us. Uh, I, I'm going to offer, offer a, 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 little pe a little piece of wisdom. Friends, im ein ani li mi li, such short words. If I am not for myself, who will be for me? Friends, the burning question is, who is the ani, the I, we're talking about? This session is called uh, Teachings and Meditations and Song. So sometimes I'm going to ask you a question and I'm going to wait a bit just so you're able to absorb the question. Who is the I that we, the Ani, that we're, talk, that we're talking about in, in Hillel's uh, message here? So, on the on the pshat level, on the literal level, on the plain meaning, on the surface level, the I 
is the self that we usually call the individual. The I is one's identity, one's cumulative personality. The I is somebody that if you say, Margot, Margot turns around. Kim doesn't turn around. Rick doesn't turn around. Margot is the, is the self of the person who turns around. Oh, is the personality, is the one who has th that place in life. That's who the I on the shut level is. And, and it's very true. It, it's true. But only on the pshat level. <laughs> yes, yes, it's vital to have and to develop a healthy and, and, and refined self-image and and work out the, compl the complexities of that image, re, of that inner world of ours. So when your name is called or when you view yourself, you are able to point to some, someone very specific. Uh, although very complex, but very specific. I have, I have this in mind when I speak of myself. But friends, uh, Mamish, take this to heart, that's only on the surface. That's only the surface level. And I think Hillel, takes that idea of I for granted. I don't think he is uh, even addressing that level of I. I believe that the Ani, the I that Hillel is referring to, is really the I, the capital I, of the neshama, of our souls, or in Sufi language, of our essential selves. I think that is the ani that Hillel is really talking about. We are going much deeper when we address the question, if I am not for myself, we're going much deeper when we take that as referring to the soul or to the essential self. So Hillel's aphorism, Hillel's words of wisdom would read like this. If I im ein ani li me li, if I am not for my e essential self, who in the world will be if i am if i am not for my essential self who is going to take care of the essential self but me if i do not if the ani if i do not take the time the effort, the practice, 
in reflecting and refining our soul consciousness, which is at the core and the essence of my I, then mealy, who will? Who possibly can do that work for me? Who can dig that deep into one's own self b but me? And the answer is nobody. <laughs> nobody can do that. Nobody can do that. That's the ungiven answer. Me, Lee, who's going to do it? No one's going to do it but me. And on this deep level, we are saying that we are actually the only ones to do it. We can seek a little help from our friends. <laughs> We can seek a little guidance, but ultimately it's only it's it's it, it's it's a work that is that is incapable of being worked out but but by but by the person. So everybody knows. I mean, especially from the last few classes on, on, on uh, mis Jewish mysticism and Sufism, where we brought out a very important point that everybody knows that the self, when we talk about the self, when we talk about Ani, the self consists of a small I with a, with a little dot on top, and a capital I. And the small I is referring to that part of self that is, exter that is kind of external, that is kind of like a, it's a manifested self. It's the self that, that becomes uh, expressed outside outside of me it's the self that, that leaves impressions to up uh, to, to the outside world to society uh, how i come off as a person what impressions people get uh from me when my name is mentioned or when i walk into a room that 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 eye is a very important eye, but it's a it's it's a small eye. Then there is the 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 the, the capital I, within me, within the self. And that's the internal I. That is the I that our Jewish. Uh, mystical masters say is is representative of the Tselem Elohim of the Mamish uh, uh, Tselem Elohim Chelek Elohai Mimaal Mamish. Uh, that is the I that that is at the core of every single human being, which is reflective of the divine image. It is the deeper I. It is the I at the core of the I. That capital I of the Ani, of me, is, 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 is accessible 
to no one else but you in totality. I can share that capital I. I can share that big I, that, the, the big I. But ultimately, n- no one can actually have access to that I but me. Even we have trouble getting access to that, to that place of I. And for that reason, introspection and development of that part of ourselves, that that soul part, that, that essential self, no one else but you can do this avoida, can do this, this kind of heart work. This kind of heart work is, is mamish the most personal thing that we can do, that we can possibly do. It actually is the most intimate act of love out there, is to connect with the essential self that abides within us. You know the 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 medrash. Uh, there, there. Uh, I I think I've mentioned this many a time, but it's 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 kadai to invoke uh, and bring bring down on 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 Rosh Hashanah. There's a medrash at the beginning of of Genesis, on the verse, on the verse, uh, vayehi or. Let let there be light. And then there was light. So the Medrash says that the divine light at the beginning of creation uh, had to constrict it, it it had to constrict itself because the light was way too bright and the light the divine light was all encompassing there was no room for anything else but divine light so there had to be some sense of withdrawal some sense of constriction uh, 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 of that light but but god did not want to leave the world without divine light so the medrash in 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 really uh in really spielbergian kind of kind of uh, metaphor the medrash says that God had to hide a little bit of its own light and hide it somewhere in the world so the light could be in the world but not shine as bright uh, uh, as to consume the world. And the Medjur says after after millions and millions of attempts of where to hide the light and seeking advice from angel from the angelic uh, uh, co- co- uh, courts that are up in heaven of course it's all metaphor uh, and seeking advice from from all of all, all of the counsel that that God might have they came to a conclusion 
where can we hide the light that it that the divine light will will not be obvious and the the, uh, the 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 conclusion the cumulative uh, 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 conclusion was hide your divine light in the heart of mankind that is the safest hiding place that you can find hide it in the heart of man Friends, to make contact with that light that abides within on a personal level, to catch, to catch a glimpse of our essential selves, is mummish an act of revelation. It's a self-induced experience of the original via he or let there be light. Nothing less than that. So friends, how vital that is as a springboard for Rosh Hashanah, for our Rosh Hashanah. To make our Rosh Hashanah significant, uh, people find, find different, different, different ways. And Hillel is reminding us, you know what the best way is? Take some moments of meditation and prayer. Make this a project of yours throughout the upcoming year to dig deep into the place of the essential self. Do not hide from from the revelations that the essential self has in store for you. Do not hide from it. It's already, it's already, the, it's already hidden enough. What we have to do is unearth it and to find glimmers of light that, that are, are deep, deep within our souls deep, deep within our essential selves and have that revealed to the outer self. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I, you know, I... P -p part of the part of the avida on on Rosh Hashanah is li lishmoa kol shofar lishmoa to hear. So I, I am not going to you know I'm not going to desist from hearing from you. Uh, I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt this with a little a little meditative song. Uh, uh, but if uh, while I while I uh, get my get my uh, friend here. Uh, if anyone has anything to add or anything to to express uh, that comes from the deep place, uh, uh, you you are totally welcome. 
I, I wouldn't want, I, I would like, I wouldn't want a whole string of them, but you know, uh, Kim will, will uh, uh, crowd control that. Uh, Cause we, we just simply don't have the time, but one or two, uh, I, I wouldn't mind hearing from you. Hearing and listening is a, a big part uh, of, the, of the practice in, of Rosh Hashanah, is to open up our hearts uh, to, and our souls uh, to be listeners. While you do that, I would add how, how proper it is that you're talking about Yehi Or when we're celebrating the birthday of the world of creation. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Marsha. Hi, um, I was in a service uh, to, to last night um, where the rabbi mentioned that let there be light was the first mitzvah in the Torah. And I'm, I'm wondering if um, the idea of being a light is, is actually a mitzvah for us. I always thought of it as God saying, let there be light. And it was kind of like a magic trick. <laughs> and then there was light. Is, the, um, is it a, the mitzvah? No, no, no. I, 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 think so. I hate to uh, uh, <laughs> contradict, contradict. Uh, uh, it, 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 it certainly, it, it certainly is the first, it, 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 it has, it has this primal importance because it is the first, uh, it's one, of, one or the, the second, uh, 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 pr primal, primal, uh, Act in the narrative of this of the uh, uh, creation story uh, is it it ha it has a primary uh, uh, place uh, yehi or vay and then vayehi or there was light it has a primary place but it can never it's it's never referred to as a mitzvah it's never referred to as a mitzvah in fact at the at the end of, uh, I will re be referring to the first mitzvah in the Torah uh, uh, that that uh, that mamish is that mamish is the first mitzvah in the Torah, and you you will be surprised what that first mitzvah is, uh, or you might not be surprised, but it, but it's not light. Be. It's not okay. It's, it's not light. And yet, it does sort of fit uh, right in with what you although, said. The light although, is hidden uh, in our heart, so although the cre it although the creation mitzvah. of light being being up there on 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 the list of firsts uh, is indicative. Yes, the, that that in that the rabbi is correct is indicative of something very special. Yeah. Okay, friends, I want, I want us to meditate on these two words. The first word is ruach, which also is like really c coming from the b mamish, the beginning uh, of the story of Genesis. Uh, and you have to know that anything start, uh, that, that, is, uh, uh, that is mentioned in the beginning of Genesis uh, is, is uh, primordial and primary uh, and continues uh, and continues on for the rest of uh, reality, for the rest of existence. Uh, the, these are the foundations uh, of creation, and the foundation of creation uh, is is mentioned in the Torah as ruach, veruach Hashem merachefet al pene hamoyim. That in the in the I think the second verse in in the story of Genesis. Uh, and the and the wind or the spirit of divinity is hovering over 
over the face of, of, of the earth. Uh, I love that imagery. I love that imagery. There is a ruach, there is a spirit of divinity hovering over the earth. It is invisible, uh, but, but, very, but very felt. It can't, it can't be seen, but it can be, it, it can be experienced. Veruach Hashem. And, and I, I, it's, it's a, I, I want to change the famous song that Shlomo introduced and, uh, to, the, to the world. Uh, he has a one-word song called Ruach, and it really refers to the, to, to the divine spirit that encompasses the world. But, you know, also that Ruach was placed within the human soul. The human soul is also called that we have a Ruach Hashem. We have the spirit of divinity. We have the spirit of transcendence living, living and alive within us. So I want to change the word sometimes from Ruach, which refers to divine spirit, to something that I think is important for us to, to, uh, to meditate on, and that is Ruhi, my spirit, the Ruach within me. Ruhi makes it, uh, makes it singular and possessive. We, we have within us a Ruach that is all our own, so uniquely ours. And that's what we talk about when we talk about our neshama. That's what we're referring to when we talk about the essential self, getting in touch, getting in contact with the essential self, is allowing our inner ruach, the ruchi within us, to, to arise. Ooh, it's only a, a two-word song, so you can do it with me and hum with me. And Rick, you, I see you playing. Ruach, 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 Ruach,
Okay, friends, let's, let's go on a little with, the, uh, with Hillel's wisdom. So after we've caught a little bit of a glimpse of the essential self, which is the most intimate act of love that we could ever perform. Then Hillel goes on and says, Uchisha'ani la'atzmi mo'ani but if I am only for myself, what am I? So assuming one has reached and, and you know, actually refined a, 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 a beautiful and healthy relationship with our essential self. We have reached, you know, the core. We have reached maturity. We have reached some semblance of, en of, of, of enlightenment. And we mummish know, you know, we know, we know the I thou. We have a semblance of an understanding of what our place is within ourselves and, and, and in correspondence to the rest of the world, assuming that we have reached that level of maturity and, and enlightenment, Hillel and our, uh, uh, the rest of our wisdom teachers <laughs> caution us Mamish caution us that there might exist in, in that fulfilled sent, uh, state of consciousness that we have reached, there might exist two dangerous and harmful tendencies. that grow from that accomplishment, actually. And the first tendency is withdrawal from the ordinary world and society. Once one has gotten used to a, a, a deep, deep sense of inner self, our wisdom masters caution us and say that deep hearts and soul work 
can lead to a, uh, a propensity to isolate oneself from those that are not doing that kind of work. that the soul people of the world and the spiritually advanced have to be very, very careful in not creating for themselves a kind of hierarchy and a kind of hierarchical club that excludes others. We have seen that. And the second possible obstacle in this kind of deep heart soul work is that it can lead to and promote a sense of superiority. When one finally makes contact with their, with their own inner light, which is a great accomplishment. It's a, it's a great level to live on when, when your inner light is shining, when your inner light is, is revealed to, to one's own self. But when that contact is made, when that illumination is, is revealed, we also might be consumed by that light, self-consumed by that light. Remember that old song, blinded by the light. We might be blinded by our own light unable unable to see the light in others say the masters unable to see the light in others because we are so totally consumed with our own light so it's paradoxical, it's ironic. The goal is to, to be in touch with the light and the warning is, but watch out for the light. There often arises a false, a false sense of conceit and, and arrogance that is attached to enlightenment attached to uh, spirit, spiritual maturity. There's a false sense of conceit. That's why the Torah points out emphatically, vividly, vividly, that Moshe, the Ha'ish Moshe, Anav Mikol Adam, that the man Moses, who, who Taka re reached the, height, the heights of enlightenment, the heights of, 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 of body and soul uh, being, being in, in unity one, one with the other, who reached the level of panim el panim, face to face, with his own with his own uh, essential self, and the essential self of of the cosmos. Vaish Moshe anav mikol adam. The only attribute 
that the Torah lauds about Moses is that he remained even in that state of high consciousness. He remained the humblest of all men. Humility and enlightenment and spiritual advancement are inextricably connected one to another. And the arrogance these days of religionists all across the board, all across the board, the arrogance that is being manifested in, 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 in so many different camps in, in every religious tradition, I own the truth. I have the enlightenment. The light is shining only on me. Is anti-enlightenment, is anti-spiritual. And the cause of, 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 of so much harm and so much chaos in the world. If when the light within is revealed leads to to a a a an a, a, an an attitude of one upmanship if it leads to a retreat from society and and the normal world <laughs> That is what Hillel is speaking about when he says, but if I'm only for myself, if, I'm ex if, if I become exclusive, if I believe and I, and, and, and if I believe that I have a monopoly on the truth and on enlightenment, that is when Hillel says, Ma'ani. <laughs> then what, what are you? <laughs> what am I? What, what am I? What have I turned into? with all my enlightenment, if it is a type of exclusive or arrogant enlightenment. Ma'ani, what have I turned into? What am I? Friends, you know how many spiritual leaders, you know how many noble political leaders come under that category? who feel that they have attained a certain sense, a, a certain level of enlightenment, a certain level of, 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 of intelligence, and, 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 and even, even enlightenment and spirituality. They feel they, that they are, they are representatives and manifestations of that in all in all traditions and all they really are 
is that they they are they might be they might be they, they have turned into sp spiritually enlightened ego driven self involved monsters that's who some of the political and religious uh, leaders are in this world. So Hillel is warning those that have attained a certain amount of, of spiritual enlightenment, be careful. Be careful. Humility and modesty uh, uh, are are so I interconnected with enlightenment that they have to be a, th there has to be there an obvious union and then finally friends it's a, it's the finality of this mission and i hope it's not the finality of uh of this meditation. Finally, ve'imlo achshav eimatai. If not now, then when? If not now, then when? So I want to talk about time a little bit. One of the major themes of Rosh Hashanah is about time. It's the new year. Hayom Haras Olam. Today is the birthday. Is the birthday of... It's really not the birthday of the creation of the world, but it's the birthday of the creation of... of uh, the commem commemoration of the birthday of the... of, 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 the, uh, of the creation of, of mankind. So Rosh Hashanah is about time. Friends, time, when you think about it, is the common factor that binds and unifies all of creation. There is no other unifying factor. That, gl that glues all of creation together into one unit than time. Time is the glue that, that binds uh, all reality together. And it's funny and mysterious at the same time. Time is, right? Time is so, is so funny and it's so profound and so mysterious. Friends, when you, when you sit and ponder a little bit about time, time does not lend itself n naturally, naturally to the idea of new beginnings. It doesn't. De days and hours just seem to endlessly follow 
one after the other without re really significant natural demarcations. When you take a look at time, it flows and it flows day after day, minute after minute, second after second, and it just seems to 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 flow with, with with without any splits, without any demarcations. Of of course, of course, we we have we yes, we have different seasons. Not not so much in Florida. <laughs> In Florida, it's like one long, uh, the, the year is like one long year. Uh, we, we, have, we, have, we have different seasons. We, there, there are different cycles. There are different cycles in, in life and in time. But, but rarely, to tell me if I'm, if, if I'm mistaken, but rarely a day, rarely a day that kind of announces itself as radically separate from the one that came before. The proverbial retiree in Florida mostly lives like on that level. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going from the Northeast to retire to Florida so every day can mamish be, you know, like, like even, even straight, one minute to one hour to one day f flowing into each other until two or three decades go by without me even noticing it. Without me even noticing time. Hardly any day announces itself as whoop, boom. I am different. This day is going to be different from another day. Enter Judaism. Enter Judaism the genius of Judaism, where the cycle, the cycle of endless time is put right in our hands. Marsha, you want to know the first mitzvah in the Torah? The first actual real mitzvah in the Torah has to do with man's control over time. When the Torah says, HaChodesh HaZeh Lachem, Rashi Chadshechem, this month for you is going to be the Rashi Chadshechem, the head of all months. That was spoken uh, by 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 uh, by by uh, the divine voice to Moses to tell the Israelites. That is the first mitzvah in the Torah. It's to create a calendar of time, to create, to create a, a control over time, over your time, over endless days and months and years, over that endlessness. Create splits. Create focus. The Torah lays into our hands the ability to take a day, 
and proclaim that it is the start of something new. The ability in our hands that time has suddenly separated in an appreciable way from what came before. That is the mamish, the genius of the Jewish calendar. Our Jewish calendar is the manifestation of man's ability to isolate time. To, friends, to stop time and refocus, to celebrate time differently and uniquely from last month to this month, from Rosh Hashanah into Yom Kippur, from Yom Kippur into Sukkot, and on and on. The, the ability to mark time and say to ourselves, this day is a new year for me. This Rosh Hashanah is going to be a new beginning for me. To be able to mark and say, this day is going to be the first day for the rest of my life. And I am the one imposing that upon myself. To be able to say that, that's, a good, that's, that's unbelievable. That's, that's man taking, t mankind taking charge, taking control of time. And that is what exactly what Hillel is saying. The Imlo Achshav, if not now, then when? That is what he's saying. The past is gone. The past is like uh, speeding past us, like in a rear, but in a rear view mirror. <laughs> It's there, but it's in a rear-view mirror. And the future is not even yet born, not even yet a reality. What we're left with is only ve'imlo achshav, is only, if not now, is the only thing we are left with, is the here and the now, to feel it to act, it to implement and experience the now. Because the only alternative to the now, where we in, are in control of time, is amatai. <laughs> the only other alternative is then when. <laughs> and when is is nowhere to be seen when it is an illusion when amatai so the first part of the mishnah im ein anili mili and the second part, if I'm only for myself, who, uh, what, what am I, is all dependent on, on our, our stimuli of imlo achshav. If I don't act, if I don't experience in the here and now, then amatai, then when?
They're all contingent. They all they all are in uh, uh, dependent on each other. But our control of time, our control within time, is vital. And I think we might end with this story. Rab Moshe Kabriner was a a student, uh, not only a student but also a friend, a disciple and a friend uh, of the Kotzker Rebbe. Uh, imagine, imagine being a student and a friend of the Kotzker. Wow. <laughs> who had the approval, at least, uh, of the Kotzker. So Moshe Kabriner died uh, at, at a fairly, fairly young age, and a lot of Kotzker Hasidim were, were at his funeral. Uh, and, 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 and the Hasidim asked, asked the, the Kabriner, the Hasidim of, of, of Moshe Kabriner, uh, at the funeral, they asked them, uh, "What what was most important to your Rebbe?" You know, if you can take your Rebbe's life, which was illustrious, illustrious, if you can take your Rebbe's life and kind of encapsulate, summarize, what was what was like the most important thing to your Rebbe? It's, it's actually a good question. And one of the Kubriners, like Elder Hasidim, said, what was important to our Rebbe? And he answered, whatever he happened to be doing at the time <laughs> was the most important thing to our Rebbe. They were saying that our, that the Kubriner, the Rebbe, was constantly living in the immediate now, in the immediate achshav, in the immediate now. What was important to him? Whatever he happened to be doing now, that was the most important thing to him. He extracted, and we too, every drop of life out of the present, out of the now, and not to view time or life as endless. Because it isn't. <laughs> because it isn't endless. So every drop, every drop of nectar, which is every moment in time, must be appreciated. Rosh Hashanah teaches us that. Rosh Hashanah teaches us that. Time is not endless. We are mortal. And every moment of time uh, uh, our, our, our state of consciousness has to be uh, involved in, in bechol levavacha, uvechol nafshecha, uvechol meodecha. Every moment in time, God forbid, cannot be taken lightly. And whatever whatever activities, whatever projects whatever whatever we do we have to maintain on, on a, a spiritual level of awareness that is of the highest highest quality that is coming from the essential self not from the little not from the little dotted eye not from the superficial self but every activity there has to be an awareness That I'm going to put everything. If if it's worthwhile doing, it's worthwhile doing 
Bechol Libi, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my everything. And that should be a commitment uh, that we ought to that we ought to nurture uh, in in the coming year. If that's the only if that's the only thing that we uh, kind of uh, work on and accomplish, then our coming year is going to be f so full of grandiose moments. <laughs> if we put the quality, it's going to be so sparkled with these these little mini explosions of of, of enlightenment, of of warmth, of of soulfulness, of sincerity. Uh, that that our 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 coming year taka is going to be enhanced and it is going to be a good one. Okay, so we're going to end the talking there. Let me let me end. Uh, we we got to end with a song, for sure. I am one and you are one and we are one together and la 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 da. I am one and you are one and we are one together. So I witness to the world Adonai Echad Alalala Sing with me La La Adonai Echad Shema
啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦啦。啦啦啦哈。Return again. Return again, return to the land of your soul. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul.、Mm. Return to who you are. Return to where you. Return to what you are born and reborn again. Allah, la la la, Allah da 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 da, Allah da 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 da, Allah da Allah, Allah da da, Allah da da, Allah da Allah da da da. Allah da 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 Allah da da Allah da da Allah da da da. Return to who you are. Return to where you are. Return to what you are born and reborn. Again. Okay, Chavra, Chag Sameach, Chag Sameach to everybody, and a Shana Tova.